I'm here at Chatham House in London with Professor Muhammad Yunus, a Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize winner and pioneer of the microfinance market, who's in London to receive an honorary degree from the London School of Economics. And he's kindly given Euromoney a few minutes of his time to talk about the reasons why he's here in London today. Professor Yunus, what is social business? Well, the social business uh, is a business where you don't want to go into it to make money for yourself. The whole purpose of the business is to solve problems. It's a non-loss, non-dividend company for solving social problems. Here, the owners can uh, take back the investment money over time, but no dividend whatsoever after that. So this is all focused on solving the problem. The basic idea is to delink from the profit idea, personal profit idea. Company makes profit, profit stays with the company. Because once you let even its slightest of the profit to get into it, your whole logic of profit gets into it. So we want to isolate from the logic of profit and install instead logic of solving problems. And it opens up a completely new world of business which solves very intricate problems of the society. Because some people would say what, that what you describe is not capitalism. Uh, depends on what we understand by capitalism. To me, capitalism means it's free market, options, more options for people, and free competition. And it widens capitalism because it brings uh, options. You can have two kinds of business. You can choose. Today, we have no choice. Only business is to make money. So I'm saying, no, you have a choice. You can make money by doing business. You can also change the world by doing business. It's your choice. You can combine in many different percentages. You can do, do, combine. You can run all your enterprises uh, in one or the other, or you can mix 10% of your enterprises as social business, 90 on social, social business, and other way. Uh, com combine. So that you have m much more choices than before. I'd say this is the essence of capitalism. Uh, present system is kind of restricted capitalism. When, when you talk to big multinational companies about this idea of new social business, what generally is the reaction that you get at the moment? I get very good response. Uh, actually, I'm very happy because I didn't know that this would be the uh, response. Uh, big businesses coming to me, coming to us, to talk about social business. I don't know them. I'm not, I was never in their world. So they are coming to introduce themselves and showing that we would like to do some social business, what kind of business we can do. Like when Adidas wanted to ask the same question and uh, asking for a suggestion, I said, why well, we can create a social business and we can start with a mission statement. And he said, what kind of mission statement? I said, very simple mission statement. Nobody in the world should go without shoes. As a shoe company, it's our responsibility to make shoes affordable to even to the poorest person. He was shocked. He said, that's a big goal. I said, Adidas is a big company. So why can't we do that? Then he took it as a challenge. And he and his colleagues worked for two years to come up with the solution. He asked me how cheap it should be so that it's affordable to the poorest person. I said, maybe under one euro. He again was taken back, back because he didn't feel that Adidas shoes can be sold under one dollar, mm -hmm. one euro. But he worked very hard to tip to this level. It came very close to it, about the one euro shoes. So today it's produced. So this is the kind of thing we have uh, with Uniqlo, with Adidas, with the BSF, with Otto, many companies with Intel Corporation. They are coming to us with doing that. So this is a kind of a new experience for us and we are coming up. Uh, when I was visiting uh, UK, London for two days, several top business in this country met me we discussed and elaborate how to get involved with social business, and I'm sure this will be followed up and we will get into things. You, you cannot even think that they will be talking about social business, but they do. Obviously, Euromoney is a banking publication. What role do the big global banks have to play in social business and also in the area of microfinance? Very important role, very important role. Finance social business, because you are a finance organization. Uh, create social business fund. I think in a couple of months, uh, uh, there'll be new fund will be uh, announced by Credit Agricole. It will be named as Social Business Fund. It will be dedicated to financing social, in investing in social businesses. So any bank can do that. Credit Agricole is only taking the lead. 
so if you have the source of funds, many people will come up with ideas of social business, brilliant ideas. Uh, today they don't have those ideas because nobody asks for them. Uh, businesses, all businesses have enormous creative powers, enormous technology at their command and they're using for making money only. If you open the door for social business, this creative power, this technology can flow into solving problems. And with that kind of creative power coming out of these businesses, no problem in the world can exist. Because human creativity is way powerful than the problems that we have around the world. But we never used it. We used it only one purpose, making money. That's why we create problems. And banks might say, but our, all, our whole reason for being is to create money for our shareholders. So if you were talking through me to a bank chief executive right now and say, you can be involved in social business, what might you advise and how might they go about it? One simple thing I would suggest, once, uh, if you want to find out what the shareholders think, one simple thing, you come up with an idea, we are going to create a social business fund. And it will require such amount of money. This is how your shareholders would, uh, would like to participate in it. If you are interested in participating in it, you uh, put in the box and uh, tell us how much money you want to put in this social business fund. This is the purpose of the social business fund. I'm sure many, many shareholders will sign up, say, go ahead, I'll do this for you. So that this is, we never ask the shareholders. We're assuming shareholders is a money-making uh, greedy people out there, they are waiting for our money. You give them a chance to change the world, they will change the world. But we never ask that question. It's a question of asking it. If you ask, you, know, you may say, well, not too many people will respond. Well, start with the number we have. But you'll be surprised. You know, we have an experience where shareholders responded, 98% of the shareholders responded in a very positive way. So we, we never un uh, expected that kind of thing. But if you ask the right kind of question, people will respond very well, very warmly. Many of the people who are watching this video will be readers of Euro Money who are both senior bankers but also themselves quite wealthy individuals. What can they do on an individual level to help move this concept forward? Two things. They are experienced people. They have gone through business experiences. They know a lot of people. They can individually create social business, individually. A social business is a huge big business. It's a tiny little business because you are addressing a fraction of a problem. If you know how to address a fraction of a problem, you have developed the prototype, you develop the seed. Once you have developed the seed, plantation is easy. So you, with your creative ideas, with your control over your own resources, you can create a small social business to find out what it means, how you do it. And once you successfully do it, you cannot resist anymore. You are sucked in. The virus has entered into your body. Now you'll create more and more, you'll expand it because it's such an exciting experience. Making other people happy is an exciting happiness that you can do. Don't miss it out. And one final question on microfinance. You're seen as one of the pioneers of microfinance. Obviously microfinance in some areas has, has got a bad name for whatever reason. How do you see the development of microfinance right now uh, in some of the developing markets and beyond as well? I think microfinance has developed pretty well. It's being well uh, admired, well accepted. People need money. They're providing the money. Uh, within Bangladesh, uh, probably we lend out over $4 billion worth of money, all the NGOs and the main bank together. This money coming in cash in the hands of the poor women. So that transformed the entire economy. Mm -hmm. And you are paying it back. When you take $4 billion in, and within a year, piece by piece, you can put it back for $4 billion. It's an, it creates enormous capacity within the economy just by handling this money back and forth. So that's what's happening in many economies. Uh, yes, there are problems. Problems because some people uh, misuse this concept. They thought microcredit could be used to make personal money from that. Uh, so they see microcredit as a vehicle to make money out of the poor people which is absolutely wrong. That was the direction we are trying to get away from the loan shark. We are fighting loan sharks. We don't want to become loan shark. So they um, forgot that distinction between a loan shark and a microcredit. So that's what created problem in every case. Wherever that happened, the problem came up. So we, we are making clear that they, they can run their program, but they shouldn't call themselves microcredit because the blames coming to them now spread to every microcredit program. Microcredit program all over the world is doing fine job. But the problem in Andhra Pradesh and India, suddenly 
gave headlines that microcredit is creating problems, it's in trouble, it's a, um, kind of closed down the shop or something like that. Uh, that's not the real picture. Real picture is thriving. We just had a microcredit summit in Valladolid in Spain. Everybody was so enthusiastic about the things they're doing. Very good. Professor, you just thank you for your time and we wish you all the best of luck with all your initiatives. Thank you for inviting me.